Good afternoon. The paper we are going to present deals with an ensemble of tangible user interfaces to foster music awareness and interaction in vulnerable learners. The team that created the project and authored the paper includes two researchers from the Computer Science Department of the University of Milan, both specialized in sound and music computing, and an educator, expert in the use of technologies in the music field. Here is an outline of the presentation. First, we will describe some background experiences employing digital technologies in music therapy to overcome physical and cognitive impairments. Then, we will introduce tangible user interfaces, focusing, in particular, on their applicability to music expression. We will describe the characteristics of the tangible user interface chosen for this experience, the Kibo. After, we will frame the activities in the context of a project called Digital Notes. Then, we will report some design choices and describe the experimental setting. Finally, we will focus on the results we achieved and draw the conclusions. The current proposal is rooted in a previous experience conducted by the same working group with the help of digital technologies. In that case, the idea was to employ a computer-based interface to overcome physical and cognitive impairments experienced in musical activities by users with disabilities. The human-computer interaction occurred through the Leap Motion Controller. Leap Motion is an optical hand tracking module able to detect and capture the movements of users' hands with great accuracy. The use of Leap Motion in music recalls the concept of air musical instruments, namely virtual instruments employing depth cameras or other sensor systems that implement an interaction paradigm based on performing gestures in the air, without touching a physical interface. The experience proposed here is different in many ways. Instead of using a single device, we employ an orchestra of tangible user interfaces so as to promote socialization, peer-to-peer -peer interaction, and cooperation. Participants involved in the project are affected not only by physical and cognitive impairment, but also by conditions of social disadvantage. In the digital domain, tangible user interfaces aim to overcome some limitations posed by traditional computer interaction. They offer intuitive ways to build complex structures, manipulate parameters, and connect objects. This kind of interfaces uses physical forms that fit seamlessly into a user's physical environment, giving physical form to digital information, and taking advantage of haptic interaction skills. Tangible user interfaces make digital information directly manipulable with our hands and perceptible through our peripheral senses. Such an intuitive and immediate approach is particularly effective for young and disadvantaged users. Before applying tangible user interfaces to music, it is worth defining the concept of music embodiment, a sense-giving process focusing on the cognitive relationship that ties musical subjects and objects. The corporeal process enables the link between music as experienced phenomena and its manifestation in the physical environment. Music tangible user interfaces are a technological means able to support and encourage music embodiment, breaking down the barriers that hinder musical creativity and expressiveness, especially in young people and impaired performers. On one side, a tangible interface implies something real, concrete, so it offers a physical way to interact with music and sound parameters, somehow recalling the kind of interaction typical of traditional musical instruments. On the other side, it is a way to simplify the process of music creation and performance, making it more accessible and intuitive. Now, let's move to the device used in the Digital Notes project, called Kibo. Kibo is a wooden board presenting eight unique geometric shapes that can be inserted into and removed from suitable slots. This device, also sensitive to pressure variations on single tangibles, returns the dynamic response of a polyphonic acoustic instrument. The main control over music parameters is realized through a set of eight tangibles, easily recognizable and fitting in single slots. Tangibles present symmetry properties so that they can be rotated and flipped before being inserted in their slots. They have a magnetic core, and can be stacked one on top of the other. 
The body of Kibo contains a multipoint pressure sensor that allows to detect the insertion and removal of tangibles. The characteristics of the sensor make the instrument both extremely sensitive and very resistant. Kibo can be connected via Bluetooth or USB to iOS and macOS devices running a proprietary app that acts both as a synthesizer and a configuration center. Windows and Android operating systems are also supported via third-party drivers. The communication between the controller and the app occurs by exchanging standard MIDI messages. The MIDI engine integrated into the app supports up to seven Kibo units simultaneously, without perceivable latency. Being a fully compatible controller, Kibo can also be integrated into any MIDI setup without the intervention of the app as a mediator. The Kibo application natively embeds three operating modes that are particularly useful in educational, rehabilitative, and therapeutic fields. First, a musical instrument mode. In this scenario, Kibo's tangibles are usually mapped onto pitches. The timbre of musical instruments can be easily changed. The device is not bound to a fixed association, for example, a C major scale, but it support key changes, other scale models, non-standard note layouts. The second operating mode is the beat mode, in this scenario. Tangibles are mapped onto percussive instruments. The pressure sensor allows effects ranging from delicate brush rubbing to hard mallet beats. The beat mode simplifies interaction and makes the performance more intuitive for beginners. Finally, there is a song mode. In this scenario, Kibo is employed as a controller to trigger already available music loops. Tangibles are associated with mutually synchronized, independent tracks, like in a multitrack environment. When tangibles are inserted, the corresponding tracks are activated. When they are removed, tracks are muted. The configurability of Kibo enables heterogeneous scenarios. Multiple Kibo units can be set to cover distinct note ranges and timbers, or even work in different operating modes, thus providing the teacher with great flexibility. Specifically addressing the initiative described in this work, the Digital Notes project was launched in response to a call promoted by Milan Community Foundation a non-profit organization that supports ideas and activities to improve community life in the territories of the city of Milan and about 50 neighboring municipalities. The Digital Notes project involved three partners. The Laboratory of Music Informatics of the University of Milan, one of the most relevant Italian research centers dealing with sound and music computing. The House of Social Redemption of Milan, an institution active in both social and cultural fields, addressing problems such as the fragmentation of the social fabric, widespread educational poverty, and lack of public spaces. And, finally, Luigi Cli Ricci Foundation of Milan, offering vocational courses and apprenticeship initiatives, also for adult and impaired students. 
The project was conceived as an experiment of cultural citizenship where music turns into a means of self-empowerment and social cohesion. The goals included providing basic musical competences and skills, fostering creativity, and encouraging interaction and socialization in vulnerable young students. Workshop activities were conducted in small groups under the guidance of an experienced tutor from December 2020 to May 2021. The hardware equipment used during the experimental activity included five kibos connected to an Apple iPad. The space where most activities took place was also equipped with traditional and digital musical instruments, such as drums and an electric piano. This setting provided the tutor with many options, for example the use of kibo units only, or mixed performances involving also traditional instruments. Participants presented different types of impairment or distress conditions. The idea was to create small and homogeneous groups. Participants were subdivided into teams made of four people, in order to guarantee a number of peers sufficient to foster social interaction, and, on the other side, let the tutor easily supervise and guide the experience. Participants belonged to three categories. First, young students aged 12 to 18, with psychosocial support needs. Second, adults aged 25 to 50, with cognitive and or physical impairment. Third, children with special needs, in particular due to dyslexia, dyspraxia and dyscalculia, aged 7 to 10. Workshops were attended by 20 participants, in particular, 12 males and 8 females. They formed five teams, two teams for the first category, two teams for the second category, and one team for the third category. Each team completed a cycle made of four didactic units. Units were administered once a week, and lasted two hours each. In this way, a cycle could be completed in one month. Here you can see the tentative program of each educational cycle, divided into units and tasks. For the sake of brevity, we will remark the outcome of only some of these activities. Task 2.3 implied the ability to translate a sequence of musical events, for example symbols in common Western notation, into a sequence of pictograms referable to fiducials. In this sense, the tangible user interface pushed learners to develop soft skills, such as teamwork, problem solving, and the ability to reason abstractly. Task 3.3 asked participants to perform a music piece together by playing different roles, two leading voices, a rhythmic bass, and a harmonic accompaniment. This task encouraged synchronization abilities, information exchange and peer-to-peer -peer cooperation. Finally, tasks 4.1 and 4.2 explored the field of music improvisation, both mixing already available materials and playing freely under the influence of visual artworks. In the latter case, the portability of the system, made of Kibo units and a tablet, was a key aspect to conduct such an experience in a real museum. The key idea of this initiative, based on a computer-human interface to make music, 
was to drive participants along two parallel directions. On one side, improving their musical skills by gradually introducing new dimensions, such as rhythm, melody, harmony, and timbre. On the other side, encouraging their interaction aptitudes through music. Activities included listening to the tutor's performance, playing alone, playing with the tutor, playing in an ensemble, playing together and improvising in front of an audience. Some tasks fostered theoretical insights, other tasks focused on practical activities. The adoption of a tangible user interface was fundamental to break down the initial barriers in disadvantaged users, including physical impairments, lack of instrumental practice, sense of insecurity, and shame. This computer-based system let participants be involved in a musical performance in a very limited amount of time. In conclusion, the activities described in this paper represent a pilot study that will hopefully guide both the authors and the interested readers in better designing future experiences. With respect to other similar initiatives, our proposal presents novel features regarding the expressiveness of the digital device in use, the availability of a fine-tuned learning environment, and the attention paid to effective, emotional, and cooperative aspects. A tangible user interface can help overcome physical limitations, and it can bridge the gap between cognitive impairment and a full comprehension and experience of musical dimensions. Engagement can push the limits of users, making them obtain unprecedented results. Thank you for your attention.